Hi everyone and welcome to my how I film and edit my videos video. As my channel has been growing, I feel like I've been getting more and more questions pertaining to YouTube, what equipment I use, how I film my bullet journal videos, the list goes on and on. So I thought today I would make a very thorough explanation as to pretty much everything that I do to put my videos together. Everything I've learned is self-taught, so even if things aren't technically correct, there are things that I do that work for me, so keep that in mind. I had no idea what I was doing when I started YouTube, so I feel like past Caitlin would have really appreciated a video like this. I do think this video is going to be a little bit lengthy because I want to get detailed, or at least semi-detailed. So if you're interested in only very specific components, say like, how I film my bullet journal videos, then there's going to be timestamps down in the description box below. So you can go click on them, watch what you want, and you don't have to sit through the whole video, or you can sit through the whole video, that would be fun too. I think the first thing, and probably most convenient place to start, is with my equipment. The camera I use for a majority of my sit down videos is my Canon T4i. That is the camera I'm currently filming on. I'm using an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. It's a lens that comes with the camera. It's nothing special, but it's an all purpose lens and I have yet to really deviate away from it, even though um, with DSLRs, where you get the magic with the DSLR is definitely in the lens. A lot of YouTubers, beauty gurus specifically, I know at one point were really using the Sigma 30 millimeter lens. The 30 millimeter lens gives you that blurry background that's so popular that you're not really getting with my background right now. I do have a Canon 50 millimeter lens, which is also really amazing. And I don't think it's too pricey in terms of the prices that lens can go up to. I personally don't love using this lens to film myself because even though it gives you a really great blurry background, it automatically zooms in on the shot. And that means that your tripod and your camera have to be quite far away from you for you to get everything that you want in your shot. Here's some footage to show you what I'm talking about. This right here is the Canon T4i with the standard kit lens. It's a image of a fake, some fake Ikea plants I have on my windowsill. And then when you switch over to the Canon T4i using the 50 millimeter, this is what happens. My tripod is in the same position, my camera's in the same position, the only thing that changed was my lens. And as you can see, it zoomed in on the shot quite a bit. As a result of that, I find when I'm filming by myself, it can get a little tricky because I have to focus the camera on my own. I don't have someone else behind the camera that can focus it for me. Mind you, you could get around that by putting something that imitates your body where you'd be sitting, go behind the camera, focus it, come back, and then take that object away and start filming your video. Even if I did do that though, my apartment is so small that I don't find there's an area in my apartment that is well lit that I could get the shot that I want of myself. However, I do love using this lens for photography and even for getting shots of food or just any close-up shot in general. It gives a really beautiful look and, and it gives that depth of field that people always talk about, which is basically a fancy way of saying blurry background. The new love of my camera life is my Canon G7X. I got this camera originally for vlogging. A lot of vloggers use it because the quality of the shot is impeccable, which it should be for the price. It's not a cheap little power shot camera. One of my favorite features is the fact that it has this flip out screen so I can see everything that I'm recording, which is incredible. Even though I did originally get this just for vlogging, I've been using this more and more for my regular videos, especially my bullet journaling videos, which uh, I will kind of dive into when I get into that section of the of the video. Sometimes, mostly for vlogs, I'll even use my phone's camera to get some shots. I know people say all the time that you can get away with filming videos on your phone, but you honestly can, as long as you have good lighting. And by good lighting, I mean natural lighting. So if you're filming in front of a window, you're probably, probably going to get a really nice shot or even filming outside, that sort of thing. I'd also recommend not using your inside or your front facing cam to film. Use that outside one, because it's usually a little bit better quality. For tripod, I use one by Rocketfish. It's a pretty standard tripod, but I've had it for years. Side note, I will also be including links to everything that I mentioned in today's video in the description box below. For lights, uh, in my apartment, I only have a ring light. My ring light is by the brand Newer. It's uh, a really inexpensive brand of lighting that you can find on Amazon. 
it's maybe not as well built as some of the more expensive ring lights but it gets the job done and I really am happy with it. Back in my hometown I also own two soft boxes which I also bought off of Amazon. Amazon's amazing for inexpensive lighting and usually you can find things in kits. I also have some audio equipment. I'm not currently using anything to record audio on today's video which you may or may not be able to tell, probably are able to tell. Um, because I just bought a new lavalier mic from Sony. I got this off of Amazon as well. I'm still trying to learn how to use it because I used to have an Audio-Technica lavalier mic, which is a really inexpensive lavalier mic that I think is amazing for beginners. The only reason I didn't buy it a second time around after I had lost it was because there's no light indicating whether it's on or off. So there would be times where I have it hooked up into my camera's mic port and I filmed a video and I didn't realize the mic had been turned off the whole time and I ended up with no audio at all because when you plug it into the camera it actually overrides the audio that your DSLR is filming so I had a whole video filmed but absolutely no audio. It was horrible and that probably happened a few times. So this one from Sony doesn't have any sort of on or off switch. It doesn't seem like it needs a battery. So I'm still testing whether or not I like the quality of it, but if or when I do use a lavalier mic again, I'm going to try and record the audio externally from the DSLR. So I either I'll hook it up to my laptop and record audio on there or I'll record it onto my phone, just somewhere where I can have the audio somewhere else and not overriding the audio on my camera so that if something happens with the audio that I record on here, I am not screwed. I still have something that I may be able to salvage on my camera. Quick tip, if you are recording audio separately from your DSLR, so if I had my lavalier mic hooked up to my phone right now, you wanna make sure that before you start getting into your video that you give a nice clap so that when you're editing you'll see the audio of your camera and you'll see the audio of the mic and there should be a big spike that the loud clap makes in both audios so you'll be able to line them up perfectly and your audio will be in sync. That was a lot of talk about equipment. Let's actually talk about how that equipment gets used in the filming process. I'm gonna start by talking about my bullet journaling videos specifically because I get a lot of questions about that area. I know many of the questions about the bullet journal video have to do with that overhead shot. And I totally understand that because when I first started, I had no idea how to get an overhead shot shot with just my tripod and I think now I'm at the point where I'm close to mastering it but it's been a process a very long learning process for my surface I use a white foam board you can buy these from Michaels Staples anywhere that sells posters I love using these for the bullet journal videos because I like the white background but these also make amazing reflectors when you're filming regular videos in the video that I was filming yesterday I set up two chairs so that I could create my white surface. In between the window and my DIY surface, I put my tripod. And on my tripod, I actually set up my Canon G7X. One of the reasons I have been filming with my G7X lately for the bullet journal videos is because when you're trying to get an overhead angled shot with a tripod, your tripod has to do a little bit of tilting. When I used to do this with my DSLR, the weight of the, the DSLR was so heavy that I couldn't get much tilt which is why in some of my earlier bullet journal videos, the angle is a bit off. But because this is a lighter camera, I can get a more true 90 degree angle. So hopefully from the footage, you can tell that the tripod is sitting, is standing on a bit of an angle because one of the legs at the back is extended a bit longer so that it can have a little bit of a tilt. It is not the most stable thing in the world, so I wouldn't be doing jumping jacks around it or, or doing anything that can make it move. What you may have noticed from the setup, me being here, tripod being in front of me, and the camera sitting somewhere over here, is that I am actually shooting the footage backwards. So you film the whole video backwards, and then once you import the footage into your editing software, you just reverse the footage 180 degrees. Having a lighter camera definitely is a benefit for the bullet journal videos if you're gonna do it the way I do it. But if you do wanna use a DSLR, then maybe use some sort of counterweight to compensate for the fact that your DSLR is a little bit heavier when it's leaning forward. Or you can actually buy tripods specifically for overhead shots. Let's move on and discuss how I film my sit down videos. One thing I always like to make sure 
of when I am sitting as, or filming a sit down video is I wanna film somewhere where I have lots of natural light. Currently, as you can see right now, I am filming in front of this big, huge window in front of my living room. And then to the right of me, I have my ring light. So whenever you're filming yourself, something you wanna keep in mind is that you want your you, you want to be evenly lit because I'm not filming directly in front of the window I'm filming on kind of an angle if I didn't have my ring light on I'd have a bit of shadowing right here let me try that out just to show you what I mean as you can see there's a lot of shadowing happening on my right side whereas my left side is nicely illuminated so the ring light is really important here to balance everything out let me turn it back on I personally whoop, I almost fell there but I personally really do like the combination of filming with natural light and artificial light I hardly ever like to use artificial light on its own because I find it can wash you out but when you use the two together it looks really great if I had my soft boxes here I'd probably also put a light back there to make that nicely lit but I just have no room in this apartment for soft boxes so I am just making do with what I have. I am also using a whiteboard to the right of me that is bouncing off light from the window to like my shoulder area and hitting any sections where the ring light isn't quite reaching. I think it's always a good idea to have a whiteboard or two or three around because you never know when you're gonna need an impromptu reflector. A tip I have for filming is to always try getting more footage than you think you may need. It's always better to have to cut than be in a situation where you need, you realize when editing that, oh man, I wish I would have gotten more of this or more of that. So even, for example, if I'm taking a close-up shot of this lens and I think, oh, I only need like two seconds of this for a quick montage or whatever you may want to use the footage for, I'll keep the camera rolling for 10 or 15 seconds just in case I need some filler footage or I want to use the footage for something else altogether. Also keep in mind your thumbnail when filming, so make sure you either use a self-timer to take some photos or what I have recently started doing is I press record and then I will position myself into different positions for a thumbnail. Whatever shot I like, I'll just screenshot and use that for the thumbnail. I'm gonna bring you on over to my computer just to show you a little bit of my editing process. After filming a video, I normally take out my memory card. I use a Lexar, Lexar Professional 64 gigabyte class 10 memory card. You really wanna make sure when you are purchasing a memory card that you're buying one that is compatible with your camera and that can handle the large video sizes. I always import my footage into photos and then I open Final Cut. Final Cut is my editing software of choice right now. I also just recently bought the Adobe subscription so I've started using or I want to start using Premiere and seeing which one I like better. I've heard Premiere you can do a lot more with but because I was originally an iMovie user which iMovie is free and really great for beginners so if you're just starting out it's an amazing program and it got me through I think a year and a half of YouTube so it it definitely is more than capable of starting you off. Because I was an iMovie user, I found it really easy to transition into Final Cut. Obviously there was a learning process because Final Cut is a beefier program. I had to plug in my computer because I realized it was quickly dying. But with Final Cut, I would then go to new project. And this is all pretty simple. Yesterday I filmed a bullet journal doodle video. And then I would import the footage from this little photo icon, go to photos, grab whatever footage you need. I start off with all the footage I filmed pulled into a project and I do a rough cut and take out anything that I don't need using the command B button and then the delete button, anything that I don't want. Once you edit a few videos, you'll find yourself speeding up in terms of how fast you're able to get through, say, a rough cut. And something I like to do is try and edit the videos pretty shortly after I film them so that I know, oh, I said this like three times, so the third time is the good one. And I don't have to waste time watching every single bit of footage that I film because sometimes for a 10 minute video, I may have 30 or 40 or God forbid, like 50 minutes of footage if I was unable to speak properly that day. So if I edit shortly after I film, I find I can shorten the time that I'm spent doing, say, like the rough cut. So I'm gonna pull out of this and go to the finished product. This is what the video 
ends up looking like when I'm finished with it. I have a lot of cuts, so it looks a lot more intimidating than it actually is. I like my videos, even my bullet journal videos, to be very quick and to the point, so that's what ends up happening. Something you may be interested in knowing is the font that I use for all the text on my videos is called Babes New. New? It's right here. And then for music, where you can go for royalty free music, which is music that you're able to put on your video and monetize with ads, is either the YouTube Creator Studio. In Creator Studio, under Audio Library, you can use any of this music from YouTube and freely put ads on your videos. Or if you exhaust everything on here, which I quickly did, I recently s signed up for a site called Epidemic Sound. And here is where I've been getting a lot of music for my recent videos. I have like a little playlist of any tracks that I really like. <laughs> That's just a sample of one of the songs on Epidemic Sound. If you make videos regularly, I think it's a worthy investment. I also highly recommend including some sort of end card at the end of your video that is less than 20 seconds long so that you can have a spot to put end card links when you are on YouTube. There's a section where you can put links to videos that are already on your channel so that when people are finished with this video, they may see something that they like, click it and go watch another video. And that you know, improves your watch time, your views, keeps people watching your stuff, more potential for engagement, so all good things. Once I'm done with the video, I take out my external hard drive. This is a new one that I got from Safe SafeGate. When you're filming large video files, it's really important to have a hard drive. A, to store your final videos, because it's always good to have copies of your own videos on hand and also to store any of your footage or your raw footage. Whenever I create a new video, I go to my hard drive, I create a new folder, summer doodles. And then in that folder, I create two folders, final copies and raw footage. footage. So in the final copy section, I'm just dragging any promos I have. Um, which I create Instagram and I'm starting to make Facebook promos. So if you guys want to see a video on that, let me know in the comment section down below. Put the final video there. Any thumbnail options? I have quite a few here. And then for the raw footage section, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll take all the raw footage from photos and drag it in or copy it to my hard drive so that I have all the raw footage as well. Once that is done, I delete all the footage from my computer. I delete everything from Final Cut making sure that I also delete anything, like not just the projects, but also the footage that's below here. As you can see, all of the footage right here is still in Final Cut, so I wanna make sure I move that to trash as well. And then once everything is out of Final Cut, I'll click the event, which mine is called set one right now, go file, and delete generated library files, and I'll delete render files, and click unused only, press okay, and that just makes sure that everything that can possibly be on Final Cut from that video is off of it. One thing you'll learn once you start editing a lot of videos is that it takes up a lot of space on your computer, and if you keep that stuff on your computer, your disk space will fill up quite quickly, and then when you actually need to get work done, you'll have to spend all this time trying to clean everything up. For editing thumbnails for years, up until just a few weeks ago, I used PicMonkey. It is a free service online that lets you edit photos, and it's amazing. It's very easy to use, much easier than Photoshop, which is what I'm currently using for my thumbnails, or what I'm trying, a program that I'm trying to learn how to use for my thumbnails. Obviously, once all that is done I export it to YouTube as a private video and I do the description the tags all that fun stuff and then the video goes live and that's the video that you end up seeing I think I'm gonna wrap it up here because I feel like that was a lot of information in one video if there's anything that I didn't touch on enough or I didn't touch on at all that you would like me to dive further into like creating thumbnails or promos for social media then let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you have any specific questions, let me know in the comment section. I answer a majority of my comments, so the chances of me answering your question is quite high. Be sure to leave a big thumbs up if you wanna see more of these types of videos on my channel, and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye-bye, guys. We can run away, we don't gotta stay. I can feel it, it burns.